For years, the fan community of astronomy and space exploration has been asking why NASA has not flown to the moon for almost 50 years. That would be, nevertheless, with our today's technical possibilities, an easy one. From official side, various statements come to this topic, but particularly two men mean that these are all lies. Today, we want to present the work of these men more near and clarify the question why NASA avoids the moon. But first, we'd like to ask you for your contribution. Leave a comment to the video. We welcome personal opinions, expertise, contributions to the discussions, and anything that adds real value for all our viewers. If you're one of our subscribers, you'll always get a heart for it. Plus, we'll pin your important contribution to the top where everyone will read it first. Just make sure you already have a subscription, like the video, and mention both at the top of your comment. Here we go with the allegedly true reasons why nobody wants to fly to the moon anymore. The moon. Just too boring. No excuse seems to be too much for NASA to explain why there has been no manned moon mission for almost 50 years. Sometimes it is the costs. Then it was the end of the space shuttle program. Next, it was said that the moon had been scientifically exhausted for a long time. Here and there, a probe flew to the moon. The ESA has created a moon probe, and also Russia, as well as China, have only recently sent probes to the moon. Officially, there is the Artemis Project in the USA and, of course, in cooperation with NASA, which wants to send humans to the moon again for the first time and even plans the construction of a manned moon station. But the stars of the Artemis projects are postponed for years again and again, so that also here the distrust of the hobby astronomers and alternative researchers was aroused. Maybe you already know about the wild rumors about the moon. They tell about stranded spaceships, which are possibly several million years old, about a space station of extraterrestrial life on the dark side of the moon, and about a strange finding on the moon's surface. NASA wants to know nothing of it and pushes all these alleged discoveries and even proofs which some UFO people want to have found into the realm of fantasy and folklore. Two para-researchers who do not become tired to denounce the alleged proceedings of NASA are Richard C. Hoagland and Dr. Stephen Greer. Greer landed a bestseller with his book, Did We Land on the Moon? He is not alone in his doubts about the seriousness and honesty of NASA. Millions of enthusiastic readers devoured the book, and Stephen Greer is a welcome but also criticized guest on TV talk shows. We weren't the only ones on the moon. Greer's book title is a bit misleading at first. Indeed, the man is not at all of the opinion that the moon landings in the 60s and 70s were fakes. Greer believes that astronauts such as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and about a dozen others did indeed land on the Earth's satellite. However, Greer believes that the astronauts and NASA found things on the moon that were not shared with the public. According to Greer's research, Armstrong and Aldrin had already been confronted with relics of extraterrestrials during their first moon landing, and the man may go so far as to claim that Armstrong and Aldrin's sister had confirmed to him that the astronauts must keep silent about their true experiences on the moon. Armstrong was even put to this explosive statement in the mouth. In confidence, he is reported to have said, You know, if I started talking about what actually happened, my wife, my children, and my grandchildren would be in danger. They would kind of take us aside. It would look like a terrible accident. The first man to ever set foot on the moon denied all insinuations to the effect during his lifetime, as Stephen Greer was far from the first UFO fanatic to claim that NASA and astronauts were withholding important findings about aliens on the moon and possibly Mars. Armstrong died in 2012 and consequently can no longer comment on currently resurgent rumors. Buzz Aldrin is already far over 90 years old, but is still fit and expresses himself regularly on the assertions of Greer and Hoagland and calls them simply nonsense. Other NASA astronauts have also officially commented negatively on claims like these over the decades. If Greer is to be believed, they must because otherwise their lives would be at risk to those of their family. Only, why would a government or a space agency like NASA resort to such vehement means to cover up the presence of aliens? There are many opinions on this as well. Some even claim that aliens secretly control the Earth. Of course, they do not want the knowledge of their presence to become common knowledge. We can speculate a lot. The question is rather, what is really to it? 
At the assertions, on the moon, it would swarm only in such a way before UFOs and alien relics are omnipresent on the Earth satellite. Richard Hoagland's Thesis About the Moon Richard C. Hoagland is known in expert circles for his publications about extraterrestrial life on the moon and Mars. The man, who was once curator for astronomy and space sciences at the Springfield Science Museum, as well as has worked as a consultant for CBS News during the Apollo program, even wants to know about entire alien cities on the moon. Today, he says, remnants of the buildings of alien civilizations can still be seen on the moon and Mars. Hoagland also wants to know that today, still extraterrestrials are active on the moon, only these withdrew into the underground. The reason for this is the modern possibilities of a wide mass of people to observe the moon with simple telescopes. For this reason, the ships of the aliens fly also only on the side of the moon lying away from Earth that is always dark. Hoagland was criticized sharply by NASA and government officials more often. His claims have been portrayed as deeply unscientific. Hoagland is, in the eyes of renowned scientists and NASA, a person who knows how to attract attention and a gifted entertainer, but nothing more. In fact, Hoagland looks back on a career as an entertainment executive rather than a scientific career. Hoagland has functioned primarily as a museum director in the past, developing interactive entertainment programs for planetariums and astronomy-focused museums. In his various publications, Hoagland has repeatedly accused NASA of cover-ups, including references to the Martian face and pyramid structures on Mars. The Martian face was first photographed by the Viking probe in 1976 and caused a stir on Earth at the time. Follow-up missions found dozens of references to sunken structures of buildings and other traces of intelligent civilizations on Mars. In the meantime, these claims have been largely disproved. On July 22, 2006, Mars Express was able to photograph the Martian face again with a resolution of about 14 meters per pixel, and it became clearly visible that these are in fact quite normal rock formations or optical illusions also known as pareidolia. Hoagland does not consider himself by far defeated. The man continues to claim rock solidly that NASA employs a whole army of technicians who faked even the demystification of the Martian face in order to keep most Earthlings further in the dark about what is really going on on Mars and the Moon. Are these images the evidence? A huge asteroid impact is said to have once formed Tycho Crater on the Moon. So, at least scientists of NASA can explain it. But in the center of the crater rises a prominent mountain. How can this be? If the crater is the relic of an impact, there shouldn't be a mountain. Hoagland and fellow skeptic Dr. Stephen Greer claim the phenomenon, like Tycho Crater, could not possibly result from geologic processes, but rather look like the remains of mine shaft accesses. In the vicinity of the crater Copernicus, the researchers identified an object which looks like a transparent dome or even a flying saucer at a closer look. Do all these observations really originate only from the fanciful imaginations of two pseudoscientists? Hoagland and Greer like to argue about how often suspicious images materials disappear at NASA or the publication of suspicious photos was refused. The astronauts of the Apollo 10 mission photographed an object more like a kilometer long, which has been given the name Castle in expert circles. Like a castle, the formation sits on a hill and casts a distinct shadow on the lunar surface. The object appears to be made up of several parts, with cylindrical units and a large connecting passageway. Some parts of the object appear transparent, similar to the strange dome at Copernicus Crater. Richard Hoagland was also present at a NASA meeting held in 1996 to discuss all the unexplained sightings of objects and structures on the moon. Following the presentation on the part of NASA, he requested original images of the castle. Shortly afterwards, Hoagland received a refusal and NASA let know that the originals could not be found. This was already the second time that Richard Hoagland was refused visual material. On the other hand, NASA showed many photos and film recordings of the Apollo mission for the first time at the 1996 meeting. Given the richness of the footage and also the anomalies that some of the images showed, journalists and scientists alike wondered why NASA had kept these images under wraps for nearly 20 years. In the course of the gatherings, many other recent images were also shown that continue to puzzle researchers to this day. 
Even recognized scientists admit that phenomena like these cannot be explained by natural processes so far. But by far, not all researchers react so violently to ambiguities as Hoagland and Greer. Renowned lunar researchers argue again and again that we do not yet know everything about the manifold geological processes on the moon. It would be all that more important to send astronauts and researchers to the celestial body again. So we cannot clarify today conclusively why no humans have flown to the moon for such a long time. We want to let the Apollo astronaut Ed Mitchell have his say at the end. He said after his return from the moon to journalists who asked him about his feelings during the mission, My neck still hurts. I had to keep turning my head around because I felt we weren't alone there. But we had no choice. We had to go through with it. Had the man who had trained hard for years for his flight to the moon and the mission on the surface just been gripped by paranoia here? Or was there a drifting reason for the uneasy feeling of being watched? Now it's up to you. What do you think about the claims of Hoagland and Greer or about the statements of the Apollo astronauts? Write us your personal opinion about the topics in the comments. We thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon on Hidden Worlds.